it's this weird perfect storm I'm seeing of like, um, well, the the you know the economy's going down a little bit, mm -hmm. and I guess the next thing would be people losing their jobs, mm -hmm. people not being able to pay as much for rent anymore, mm -hmm. and then um, like you said, not 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 to go on as many vacations. Yeah, and then um, and plus the city is at the same time starting to ban Airbnb in a lot of spots. So it's right. like a, this is a weird perfect storm. Yeah. That you would think that house the house prices would start dropping because people are like well I can't make money Airbnb in it and I've leveraged too much to make money as a rental so I'm gonna just sell it get rid of it and kind of thing it could happen yeah. I believe it. Welcome to Live Let Thrive, a podcast about the Airbnb life, the share economy, and everything in between. Here are your hosts Micah and Steve. Hello, hello, hello. And welcome back to another exciting episode of Live, Let, Thrive. <laughs> like we got a special guest with us today. It's been a while. It's been a minute. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been a long minute. <laughs> How y'all been? We're doing pretty good. Yeah, we're doing good. We are hunted. We got a little, uh, what do we call it? We got a little uh, personal trainer here. Personal so. trainer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, so if you need to get fit, hit me up. Yeah, this is um, Live, Let, Thrive, episode 75. Yeah, 75. That's a lot of episodes. Man, we almost to 100, baby. <laughs> almost to 100. Right. Um, yeah, smooth um, opening, unlike last time, right? <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> so what have you been up to? What have I been up to? Uh, you know, just um, a lot of work, blah, 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 running the rentals and uh, family life. Christmas was yesterday. Yeah, yeah. yeah was. <laughs> How was y'all's Christmas? It was nice. It was relaxing. We got to see a smile on our boy's face, and he still appreciated it. his toys that were in his toy box, even after getting new toys. So that was yeah. nice to see. Oh, nice. You know, yeah. be thankful for what you got while still getting more. Real talk. You know? <laughs> so it was really a lesson in that day. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. And um, you had a little turn up going on? Oh yeah, that was. Oh yeah, that was what day we the had day our before turn up. Christmas Eve, Sunday. Yeah, yeah, we had a good little turn up on Sunday. Yeah, we had, had a fun. good time. Um, yeah, had a bunch of friends. Where were you? Over. I was. At I heard home. you don't have a uh, any family at home. Yeah, the wife and baby are in Mexico, so I had to um, just chill out by myself. I was a little bit under the weather too, so I didn't uh, want to. I mean, just a little bit. I didn't want to risk it by getting yeah. crunk, and so <laughs> <laughs> and so. Um, so yeah, I just uh, I just chilled at home with the doggy, and okay. um, and that was pretty much it. Plus, I had to work Monday morning. Oh, yeah, we're yeah. partying until like what two a.m., three a.m., five a.m., five a.m. <laughs> yeah, the party don't stop. We keep rocking at the artist household. <laughs> <laughs> Someone hit, yeah. hit eighty at Domino's or something like that, right? Oh yeah, yeah. You know. <laughs> I don't I don't play. I don't engage uh, in those games. Oh but, okay. Nah, but uh, yeah, man. Um, we had a weird little neighbor experience with one of our Airbnb guests. Let right. Mahogany handle that. She, uh, you know, Mahogany's a little fire, so firecracker. So. What happened, Mahogany? <laughs> um, well, I was at work, so I don't really know what how it started off. But um, we have uh, some more long term, long short term guests staying in one of our Airbnbs, and um, they have a really large truck, and apparently it parked in someone's parking spot, which I don't know how you have a parking spot on the street. But it was like in front of the neighbor's house, which I know by fact, the lady who came over and knocked on our door, I guess she was like banging on the door and we have a ring doorbell. So uh, she rang the doorbell a couple times and I was at work and I look, I'm like, um, can I help you? She's like, oh, move your car, move your car. You need to move your car. And I was like, uh, okay, well, I don't, that's not my car. I don't know what you're talking about. Cause at this point I didn't know the neighbor's truck was parked there. He usually doesn't park there. And anyway, she just, she's like, I'm calling the cops. I'm calling the cops. And man, I packed up my stuff at work and I headed home. I was like, call the cops. <laughs> <laughs> I was telling her, I was like, call the cops. And so we, I get home and I'm in the parking lot. I'm like, hey, babe, should I go over there and talk to her? And he's like, well, just we can let it go this time. Yeah, because if I go over there, I was going to let her know. You don't own the street, ma'am. You don't even live here, ma'am. <laughs> like that was the mother-in-law yeah. to our neighbor. Matter of fact, oh, I had oh. talked to her. I talked to her first. But she had asked me to move the car, and I was at work, and I was I like I completely forgot to tell tell, tell the guy to move his truck, and uh, she came back an hour later beating on the door, and I was like 
oh, I was like, oh, shoot. But by that time, Mahogany had answered th the call, and I just got off because I was still working. And, yeah, so she got kind of mad at us, said she was calling the cops. I was like, man, I don't do – I didn't know she had threatened to call the cops. I would have probably said something over the door, over the intercom if I knew she threatened to call the cops. But then, when Mahog later that night, didn't the cops show up at her house anyway? No, yeah, actually. They, yeah. There was, like, a cop at her door. They didn't have any sirens on or anything, but – um, there was a cop at her door, and there was like some some of the people that lived there were standing outside, and I'm not sure what they were talking about. But the officer was like pretty much saying, "Who lives here? No, no, who lives here? Who actually lives here?" I'm like, I bet she didn't raise her hand. <laughs> I was just standing out there, like watching from my door. I was super obvious about it. I was just watching. Mike was like, "You watching them?" I'm like, "Yeah." I'm like, "Hope she sees me watching. She should be embarrassed." How are you gonna threaten to call the cops on somebody? The then same you got day the cops called on. You have the cops at your house. <laughs> man, that's the see Arlington and their long term renters, man. They need to get it together. Yeah, I was gonna go talk to the cop. I'm like, hey officer, <laughs> can you lay it out for this lady? Does she own the street? Does she have the right to call the police because someone else is parked here? And he would have said no. And I said, There you go. So next time you wanna threaten to call the police, you can just go ahead and save that. <laughs> There but you go. He told me not to go over there. So some parking drama in the Airbnb <laughs> land. Yeah, for real, man. <laughs> People think they own the street not in Texas I don't know stuff But you know, that. in a way, from the from the homeowner's point of view, the homeowners that aren't doing Airbnb, I can see how it can be annoying that, you know, there's a car parked in front of your house all the time, if that's the case, and that you don't get to occupy that space and it's in front of your house and it's not for any of your neighbors but your neighbors whom are making money off of their house. It's kind of like, you know, dang, it'd be annoying in a way. But, you know, at the same time, they should come up with tougher street laws then because you can park where you want. Well, my, my thing Unless is... Unless you have HOA or something. Like, we were... When we moved into our house, we had a car parked in front of our house all the time. We never complained. My thing is... The street's free domain. You know what I mean? You ain't paying... Your mortgage don't cover no street. You know what I mean? That's how I look at it. But, hey, it is what it is. That's 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 true, but yeah, there was um back when out the first house I had over off of Cottonwood. Yeah, this is a long term rental now, but man, yeah, some some young dude started parking right in front of my house every day. I just I don't know, it kind of got. A, I know I don't own the street, mm -hmm. but why did he choose to keep parking in front of my house and he go visit his buddy or whatever? Unless mm -hmm. it, I, his buddy's parents didn't want him parking in front of their house, so he's parking in front of my house. Oh <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. See I don't. But, and I, I don't know. Like, I've never tripped on people. Right in front of my mailbox, too. That's... Okay. Oh, yeah. See, I'm, we have one of those mailboxes with the slot, so everybody has to walk to the mailbox. Oh, okay. So I, I see what you're saying on that. Yeah. Yeah, in front of that. mailboxes, in front of trash yeah. cans, you know, blocking people's driveway. Then that's yeah, like, no. you're doing too much. Remember, yeah, remember we had a couple people that were stupid enough. You know, when there's little, like a little section of a curb like this, and they're drop, blocking two driveways. Yeah, that... That pisses me off. Don't be retarded when you're dropping people, blocking people's driveways. But, right, right. But yeah, I, I know what you mean, though. So what's a big topic you wanted to get into today, Micah? Man, we had a bunch of them, man. Um, oh, uh, a lot of people keep hitting me up about a recession next year. I don't know if that's just the end of the year blues or what. Um, I had a bunch of stuff, though. Uh, the end of the year <laughs> blues? What do you mean by that? No, man, whenever it's the end of the year, people start coming up with all types of stuff for next year. You know, they're like, oh, recession's coming or something like that. You know what I mean? I'm like, yeah. come on, a recession. I mean, it could happen. It could happen. We can't predict it, but it's I don't know. It's hard to predict the future. You just got to stay coarse, right? Stay yeah, the like, and I, and I was talking to a bunch of people, you know what I'm saying? They were like, man, even if a recession is coming, we should have enough reserves. We should be have enough reserves to cover us um, from vacancies. But I think the guys who I was talking to, they do long-term rentals. And I, I would say doing short-term rentals is more lucrative than long-term in that aspect because one we're already charging especially if you're doing like a corporate rental you're already charging damn near double the rent rate you could easily go back down a couple of hundred dollars you know what i mean mm -hmm. so i mean i've had to deal with a lot of people I've, a bunch of people keep talking about a recession man uh my, my barber he was talking about a recession in 2020 which sounds more reliable but like still you can't predict it but i would look more <laughs> at that in 2019 <laughs> Like, people, they're building all types of stuff down here, especially. Like, I heard y'all didn't even feel the first recession, so. I wonder if that's a good barometer on if there's going to be a recession is if a barber thinks there's going to be one. Because they get a, a big cross-section of society yeah, coming in there. Exactly. Right? They get not only a big cross-section, they get a lot of people coming into town, like, find a new place. I need a new barber. You know what I'm saying? They, they're real. They do have a lot of scoop on, like, the, the community. 
you know, like dynamic. like nail techs, you know, yeah, like, like you know, or you know, they talk and you hear all the business. Hairstylists, like period, and period, and they're gonna sit there. You have to sit there for like usually a, a long amount of time. Like mm-hmm. you're, they're talking. Hmm. So how do you prepare for a recession? What are some things you should do to prepare? Even sell if it everything. was like in two years from now. <laughs> what do you say? I said sell everything. Have some cash on you. No. Cash on hand, I say. Cash on hand. Because I mean in a recession, people are going to go broke or get rich. That's the, the biggest thing of it. Like in 08, a bunch of people went broke. A bunch of people hit the jackpot. Um, so I just say have a bunch of cash on, cash on hand. Um, leverage as much as possible. Um, I hear a lot of people saying they're buying with cash, which... You know, me and Steve were more about leveraging money. So, uh, <laughs> you know, if you put down a big down payment, you know, that might have worked. If you're in a recession, your cash flow, you might have a little wider margin on your cash flow. But I would say go to the doctor. Go get checked out while you have insurance before they start jacking up the prices and everything. Hmm. Because <laughs> 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 yeah. if you see your diet, was, you know, I know like a lot of people who have don't go to the doctor. So if they have like health things come up in the middle of a recession, you're kind of screwed. Like, yeah, yeah. get on that. <laughs> you're gonna lose your job. How are you gonna have your job? <laughs> a lot of people are gonna lose their jobs. Who pays for your jobs? Insurance. Like, you know, I mean, who gives you insurance? Your jobs. Right, right. Yeah, so go to the doctor before you lose that. <laughs> yeah, that's a good. That's a good point. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's just like, like I have like that, that stock investing group. You know, yeah. you, you sat in on it one time. And people are like, yeah, yeah, we should have sold, we should have sold, or, or, or we should sell now. And I'm like, you just got to stay the course. I mean, you know, you don't lose money until you sell, right? That's the old adage. Mm-hmm. So if your stocks are down or whatever, what's the point of selling? Why would you sell when they're down? You know, they're going to mm-hmm. come back up eventually. It might take a few years. Yeah. Just like houses, like houses. Everybody jumped ship on houses back then, but they're like worth twice what they were in 2008 when everybody was jumping ship, right? Yeah. So it's just like, just, I mean, just stay the course and try to, you know, buy, um, smart <laughs> you yeah. buy smart hold on to it and i don't know it just pretend like you just just a savings account you're putting away you know because eventually yeah. they'll come back and yeah. finally finally house prices are dropping a little you think so i think so i think so i haven't seen it man I well on the higher know. end anyways people people can't charge 250 or 270 for a, pia, a piece of crap house anymore like they used to but i think the market's kind of even and out because there's two houses in our neighborhood been sitting on the market a minute Especially that open door house. And I don't know if it's been sitting on a minute due to them trying to use that open door tactic where, you know what I mean, you're more or less not really using a realtor. Or right. if it had been sitting on the market just because the market's starting to shift. In one of those houses over there, a lady had killed her husband. I'm not sure which house, but it's... In the house. In the house. By oh, us? Man. By us. You don't have to disclose that, do you? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I think hey, I'm just saying. A murder, you do. He has to disclose a murder. No, you don't. You don't? Well, I, from what I learned when I was taking my real estate courses, is as long as there's nothing on the property that caused the death of the person, you do not have to disclose. Oh yeah. Really? Yeah. I so didn't know. You pulled out that strap. You ain't got to. I thought murder houses you had to. No. A death is a death. As long as the property didn't cause that death. You yeah, don't that's what I think too. Because you no, know, what's really funny though? Because uh, when I was wholesaling houses. Um, remember that house I ran into where the dude killed himself in the back? Mm-hmm. Um, they disclosed that to me. I was like, oh, shoot. You know what I mean? And you didn't buy it? Well, no. Nah, it okay. turned into like, man, it turned into all types of hell. Like she was, the grandmother, it was supposed to go to her. Mm-hmm. But then they found her a son and it was supposed to go to him. But then they found out he was an illegitimate son and there was another son out in Frisco. I'm like, oh, hell no. Nah. I ain't dealing with this Jerry Springer crib. And then somebody, <laughs> no, like, but the guy, but like the messed up part was the guy killed himself at the, on the property, but they disclosed it to me. No, only reason, really, no, no, no. They no, didn't the mom to told you, didn't she? No, 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 no. She didn't tell me. I Googled it because remember I was looking at the obituaries and then I looked at his cause of death. I was like, oh, but if I got a hold of that information, whoever I'm trying to sell it to, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And people have weird stigmatism about people dying in property. You know, I don't. You don't? No. <laughs> hey, if it's a cash flowing asset, hey, <laughs> you could be Airbnb <laughs> anyways. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll sage it up real quick, get that up out of there and uh, keep it pushing. No, nah, yeah, but no, nah, I don't I don't have those things. Like I know mahogany does. What? People dying in houses. Oh yeah, I don't mess with that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mahogany ain't going about that. I'm not even gonna mean? sleep where there's some ashes in the house somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Let alone someone died in there. Right. But, yeah. right. Yeah. But I mean, you never know. If I don't know about it, I guess it won't hurt me. But that's what I feel like. 
you know, if you don't know about it. But, but I mean, it might, even if you don't know about it, you might see a ghost walk down the hallway. You don't even need to know. See, I don't, that don't bother me. Can a ghost hurt you? Who knows? It can make you go crazy, probably. <laughs> Ghosts can catch these hands. But yeah. <laughs> we just, just wear a blindfold like the bird box. The bird. <laughs> man, we, we watched that this weekend, man. Okay, is that movie any good? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's okay. really suspenseful. I like the suspense in it. I like the flash forwards. That's cool. I like how the layout, the layout no, of the movie is cool. No spoilers. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know. it, it, was, it, was, it was good. It was, it was decent. I'm just going to say that. I'll let you watch it. Because everybody's going around on Facebook putting their blindfolds on their kids. Going yeah. through the hood and stuff. <laughs> uh, but, oh yeah, what I was going to say was real estate knowledge helps in the Airbnb game. I'm starting to notice that. Especially like when, like not a recession's coming, but like if, if the market starts taking a little dip. And like, let's just say a recession does come. Do you think I think Airbnb might be a little bit more volatile to be hurt because of if a recession does come, people gonna stop traveling. If people stop traveling, but I think if you're arbitraging, you can just run up out of a lease. But if you're buying houses and Airbnb in them, I think you gives you a little bit more leverage because you can corporate rent it or whatnot. You know what I mean? But yeah, that was one thing. I think I think arbitragers would be at risk if like a recession comes. But I also or they'll think, turn into sorry to cut you off, or yeah. they'll turn into like long term rentals for those who lost their house, their homes, which yeah. means they have to drop their prices too. Ooh, that's a dang, that's that's a good one. Yeah, you could make yeah, that's a hit. Yeah, you could. That's fucked up though, man. Dang, you banking on people losing their homes? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm playing. I'm playing. But it, it's this weird perfect storm I'm seeing of like, um, well, the the you know the economy's going down a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I guess the next thing would be people losing their jobs, mm -hmm. people not being able to pay as much for rent anymore, mm -hmm. and then, um, like you said, not 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 to go on as many vacations. Yeah. And then, um, and plus the cities at the same time starting to ban Airbnb in a lot of spots. So it's Man. like a, this is a weird perfect storm that you would think that house the house prices would start dropping because people are like, well, I can't make money Airbnb in it. And I've leveraged too much to make money as a rental, so I'm gonna just sell it, get rid of it, it kind of thing. It could happen. Yeah. You, I, I believe it because I mean, I was talking. Shout out to Jabron. I was talking to him, and he was saying, "Hey, you might want to start looking at buying some long-term real estate just to have." You know what I mean? And I was like, "Yeah, you might want to look at that." You know, but because if you're willing to take three, four hundred dollars cash flow, and you're already making, already have a business model that Airbnbs, well, local laws will affect, I could just keep piling that on with that. And that's what I was kind of looking at too. I may start looking at something as a long-term rental. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, it is a big perfect storm coming. You know, I don't know if when it's gonna get here, but it's gonna happen. You know what I mean? We don't know when, but. Yeah. And you, um, because you're on, you're on Zillow's and you're on the Red Fins and all that, right? Mm -hmm. You have all those apps. Yeah. And I'm and I follow. I don't know. I don't just follow the what's for sale. I follow what's popping up for rent too. Mm -hmm. Just to just to keep a keep an eye on where to put my my long-term rental at and man a lot of a lot of rentals are hitting the market especially arlington i think mm -hmm. a lot of the the airbnb yeah. are jumping ship yeah because the band's coming well they the soft band whatever yeah. the people don't want to be paying a thousand dollars for a lottery ticket you know to Real see if they, to That's see exactly if they get an airbnb or not yeah. Yeah. and so um so they're starting to put them on there but man they're putting them for like 1600 1700 a month for these houses which i'm like really like a year ago it was like you know 11 1200 a month for a three two regular house mm -hmm. and now people are trying to get i guess they got like i said they got used to airbnb money uh, mm -hmm. you know making three grand a month and then they're trying to well if i you know i leverage so much i, I, I gotta make 1700 just to make the the mortgage you know i'm just thinking and so they're putting the rents at, at a high price but i don't know if they're going to get that and they're going to have to start dropping it or sell have, the house i have a question how much okay so like when i look at an arbitrage i'm gonna look i'm gonna ask you more of this because you do more long-term renting than me okay when i look at an arbitrage like a one bedroom one bath i know for a fact my rent needs to be 1300 a month or less right 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 how much do you think if you buy a house to rent it out a three two how much should your mortgage be how big is the house just a three two two i don't know how big just a three two two fifteen hundred square feet 1500 square feet i mean i mean of course it depends on the area and condition i'm just thinking right off my you know in a decent area with a um, nice looking house you know upgrades and stuff i'd say around 1500 a month 
Your mortgage? I'm think. Uh, oh, and the mortgage. Oh, okay. I thought, I thought you wanted to rent it for fifteen hundred. Well, it depends on your down payment. You just want to put the 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 lowest down payment there is, right? I just however you've been doing it. Like, cause I mean, let's just say, hey, I, I want to go buy a house, but I want to make it a long term rental. Uh huh. What should my mortgage? What should I look at for my mortgage to be to where I can cash flow at least? What's a good cash flow on a long term? Three hundred and up. Yeah. One yeah. percent rule. Make sure it hits the one percent. Yeah, one percent rule. That's at least the one percent rule. So, so um, if you buy it for one thirty, you need to be able to rent it for thirteen hundred. That's so the, that's the thing. There's you can't get a one thirty house anymore. It seems. Yeah. Let see, alone. and I don't I don't see the and the ones you can get, you're not going to get thirteen hundred a month for them. So that's that's where I'm at with uh, renting my or uh, buying my sister's house if we mm -hmm. do buy it, because she's thinking on the market she can get 140. It's a small three two, but then I I mean if I got it at that and I wanted to hit that one percent rule, you know I'd um I'd have to uh, rent it for 1400 a month, and they wouldn't I don't think it would demand that. And what, what would your what would your mortgage be though? Well, the interest rates keep going up, so for that house, shoot, what would it be? Probably around. Twelve hundred a month, eleven hundred, twelve hundred a month, depending on what the interest rates are at that time. And how much you put down? Yeah, the you dropping twenty every down. time. Hmm? You dr you ain't dropping twenty, right? No, well, 20%? no, because I've been doing the house hacking, moving into the house, okay. and putting three percent down. So would you move into that one or no? Of course, Mike. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna move into it. Of course. Yeah, yeah. But no, no, because I was wondering, like, if you you do a long term rental, what? Are you doing 30 or 15? 30. 30? Yeah. Okay. It gives you the leeway, you yeah, know? Yeah, it gives you that. Yeah, it gives you a little bit of leeway. Because if you put uh, 15 and your payment's like 2,000 a month, and you know, you know, okay, you can knock it out on 15. I'm just, you know, I'm just putting numbers yeah, up yeah, there. Yeah. But if you could do it at a 30 and it'd be 1,500 a month, you can still pay two grand a month as long if you want. Yeah. But you have that freedom. Oh, all right, man, I don't think this month I can do two grand. I can, you can knock it down to this yeah. regular 15. If yeah. you have a fifteen month lease, uh, year lease, you yeah. can't do that. You got to yeah, pay the whole mortgage. That. Yeah, you got to pay that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I was just wondering because, like, I I was looking at the numbers because I'm like, damn, damn, if people in Arlington renting their places for seventeen hundred a month, the rental market down here is about to just drop because no, are they renting that fully furnished? Or are they taking the furniture? No, out? no, that's not furnished. They're trying Ooh. to get seventeen hundred, and you know, they're trying to. So most of these people probably don't know what corporate rentals are. I don't know unless they listen to our show. <laughs> I'm just like a typical person who's been doing Airbnb, and they say, "Hey, they're coming to Bandit in Arlington," and they just jump ship. That's yeah, I can't see them getting no seventeen hundred a month. I, I, why would you pay that? Well, you can go to these little high rises they're building in Arlington and not pay that. Right, right. Like I said, they might be leveraged too high because they got it for the Airbnb intentions. You know, actually, time out. When I was at my corporate job, um, I heard a person, she was paying 1700 a month in the colony. And she was cool with that. And I was like, dang, that's like my mortgage, you know? Well, I'm like, pay that. The know? colony's high end though, right? Yeah, but... Oh, so I guess the question would be, would somebody pay 1700 a month in Arlington unfurnished? Because <laughs> I charge people sixteen to 1800 a month on a furnished one bedroom, one bath condo. All bills paid. All bills paid. Right, right, right. So I don't see, man, that might be, that might be a killer right there. That could affect the market, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because they're, they're going to have to start dropping the rent prices. I've seen that, too. People dropping their rent prices already. And if you drop your rent prices, you're coming out of pocket for your mortgage. Yeah. And I remember in the, in the, in the last recession, in 2008, mm -hmm. there was people that had, like, a, an, an extra house or two, and they, and they had to keep dropping the rent prices, and they ended up, you know, losing, like, 100 a month just to keep the house so they were getting the rent but they were they were negative 100 a month or so yeah just to hold out and then they just ended up selling it you know what we may want to start investing in the hood well the, well, the hood though, though this is the problem with the hood i've noticed <laughs> like i said i don't have a property in the hood but it's around the corner from the hood the part place that i'm talking about little rock the, you could make your mortgage every month but i don't know if you're going to have the economy to to probably charge somebody eleven or twelve hundred a month for a house, but I have to look into it. So you may be good at buying some stuff in the lower end, the hood. You know, if you know a place is not the hood, but just like a lower middle class, I'll call it. Hmm. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's Money in the Hood. Yeah, you know. So Jarek had a question. He said, "Is Airbnb a publicly traded company?" Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. They want to. They want to IPO soon, but um, and they better do it soon because they're banning it everywhere. But <laughs> yeah. trying to get the big, biggest bang for their buck. But um, yeah, not yet. We're looking. Um, they're going to though. There's going to be a lot of billionaires made out of that deal for trying sure. Trying to next. They're supposed to do it in twenty. Would you buy Airbnb stock if it IPO? Let's say uh, thirty bucks a share. No. No. Uh -uh. I don't touch stocks. <laughs> I don't touch stocks. I mean, you 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 could possibly make some money off of it. Airbnb is about to go in a different direction with their hosts. They ain't, um, they're kind of they're building their own right now. Um, yeah, they're building their own stuff. So uh, yeah, cool. Um, yeah, they're kind of building their own section of hotels and houses themselves. So I mean, I think they're gonna make money. I think Airbnb's they're preparing for city regulations. Hmm. Which is smart on their end. I had a question for you guys. Yeah. And um, it was kind of what I thought, a little bit of what the theme of the show would be. Because we've been yeah. talking about the bands, the city bands for a while. Yeah. And the directions things are going. Um, and this is more of a selfish question because I'm like, should I pour money to upgrade my house in Hearst if a potential ban is going to come? And, that, and the ban would be six months away. Is it smart? Because, I mean, and there's people out there that are airbnb in in cities that aren't banned yet. But, I mean, that's overnight that could happen, right? Yeah, that's a risk. So that's a big, that's a that's a tough question for a lot of people. Should they pour a few grand into fixing up their their Airbnb or just keep letting it ride as it is? Why not? I mean, you're, you're not upgrading your Airbnb. You're upgrading your property. So I mean, Yeah, and also, I mean, since they're, since they're going to be banning Airbnb, are long, short-term rentals okay? 30 days and longer? Yeah. You might find a bigger market for that as well. I mean, I know your home is rather... For those who have larger homes, it might not be as ideal, but, you know, when things like this come along, it's up for people to give up or, like, work sm harder and, like, think smarter mm -hmm. about how to use their property versus throwing it all up in the air. Like, forget it. I'm defeated. Like... Even if you, because like right now, you can charge, the rent went up for private rooms fully furnished. You can charge 800 a month for those without a bathroom. With the bathroom, you can charge 11 and 1200 hmm. So, I mean, if you had a house and you had three rooms, one of them has a bathroom, you charge 800 for two, that's 1600 plus 1100 for the other one. Hell, you, you can make a killing doing that. Yeah, I, I would just make sure I have more eyes in on the house since mm -hmm. there's so many different people staying. Yeah. Just kind of be more involved than you might want to be. Just put cameras everywhere. <laughs> man, <laughs> that's the subject. That's what I want. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. That, that, I, I'm never staying at an Airbnb. I'm happy you straight <laughs> said that, bro. Like, okay. So this lazy this lady rolled in to the uh, little Airbnb professional host group. And she said she had a camera inside of her place. And the guests saw it, but the guests didn't tell Airbnb. They went straight to her. They're like, hey, this is a camera. I think this is an invasion of privacy. A camera is an invasion of privacy. And the lady asked, well, hey, what would you do? I told her, from my advice, the two people that I had talked to, they got kicked off Airbnb. They had a whole pile of listings on Airbnbs because someone planted a camera. And she was like, what should I do? And I told her, hey, you should remove it because they're banning people. And then like a lot of people were like, hey, I wouldn't put no camera in there. A lot of people were talking about then few ways down the comments you know there were a few people admitting that they put cameras in their place and i'm like yo you know that ain't really too normal and i'm like <laughs> I, I told one of them i'm like you know they, they're, they're, some of the people get banned for that and they're like nah it's an airbnb's rules and policies and she pulled it up and posted it you know which i'm like anyone who does airbnb or short-term rentals through airbnb a long time for a full for a lot a lot a long time you'll realize airbnb doesn't stick to their own policies they will screw you as fast as they can if as long if the guest complains they will so i was like okay hey and then like a few more people start posting like yeah they do it too and i'm like hold on man so all these little airbnb stories of people putting cameras in there these guests are pretty much right like yo it's people that really do this like that's that's beyond me man i'm not and they're talking like in the common areas right yeah the living rooms, the, yeah, and, the living rooms. and i'm like okay. yo like, man, people trying to Netflix and chill, man. You watching them, man? 
Yeah. <laughs> For real, you mess around. You gotta tell them. You gotta tell them. There's cameras in the. Yeah, but at the same, how many of them really do it? If you were looking at an Airbnb and it said, "Hey, by the way, we have a camera in the living room," would you book that? And from what we know, a lot of no, people don't no, read, so they probably didn't know. You wouldn't book it, I'd, or I wouldn't go to the living room at all. <laughs> yeah, like that's weird because like because everyone lockdown. said like, "Yo, if I knew a camera was in there, I wouldn't book it." Right. right. I, I know I wouldn't, but I mean that just and made is that me... for more like home shares they're talking or are they so, talking? Some were home shares. Okay. Um, some were like, "Well, I just put it in the common areas." I'm like, that's. Ew, weird. Because if they're in a whole house, I think that's messed up. That's Maybe. weird to me. Yeah, that, they do a whole extreme. house. Even a home share, that's weird. Like, I have a whole living room that a home share can go to. I don't put a camera in there. If you want to get your freak on, that's your business. Just clean up after yourself, man. <laughs> I, you know what I'm saying? I, no, I'm just saying, you know. Please, but not my living room. <laughs> yeah, it ain't my living room. It's your business. It's a tenant area, you know. But that, that's weird to me, man. I, that was like, yo. You up here Netflixing and chilling, and you don't know you are somebody else's Netflix and chill, you know? So, <laughs> <laughs> that's weird to me, man. Like, yeah, I don't, go. but you know, you say you don't want to stay at an Airbnb anymore because of that. They, mm-hmm. they can do that at hotels, too. The, true. That is true. In the common areas of yeah. hotels. Yeah, Com- yeah. Well, well, no, in the bedroom of the hotels. Well, that's Yeah, I mean, that's yeah, true. somebody could sneak one in there. That's true. That's very true. But but to just know that, like, yo, I put a camera in my living room, yeah. you know, when you I come over. Stay. And the one lady, she's like, oh, yeah, I tell them, hey, that's a camera right here in this living Well, okay, one lady, she halfway justified her. She said she has an area of her house that's not allowed, the guests aren't allowed to be in. So she has a camera on that area. Oh. So that made sense. But the that rest of them, I'm like, yo, that's... That you're on some straight weird... Yeah. One thing we're going to start selling on our website... Yeah, is um, um, camera detectors. Hey, that, those are gonna make a killer. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Those they are. are they are making a killer. Yeah, they're making a killer. We're gonna have a link on our on our website just to buy yourself a little camera detector. So whenever you go travel, yeah, even hotels, Airbnbs, you can find yeah, out where the cameras straight are. Straight up. And you know what though? And this is another thing for the people that do put cameras in their places. I'm gonna tell you how easy it is to get shut down. Let's just say you tell a guest, "Hey, I got a camera in the living room." What if that guest, because remember, guests can do anything like that and get a refund and you can get kicked off. All I have to do is find your camera, move it to the bedroom, take a picture of it, call Airbnb. What just happened? <laughs> I get a full refund. Full refund, right? You, you, could, bring, you could bring your own camera and plant it and get a free refund. Straight up. Like, I'm going to be like, man, for, that is true. That's a real big vulnerability Airbnb needs to get their stuff together on. But yeah, man, that was... That was weird, man. I just didn't know it was a group of hosts that do that. Mm-hmm. I always assume that you're being filmed, Micah. So you can always, so you always got to perform your best. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> there you go. You know, <laughs> <laughs> might have to do a couple more strokes. Just playing, just playing. Back to the regularly scheduled program. <laughs> But, uh, Speaking yeah. of complaining to Airbnb, um, well, remember I told you if if people could sue Airbnb, and you said you happening? can't, yeah, you said they can't sue them because they're just the facilitator. Yeah. Well, a lady recently mm-hmm. got killed in Costa Rica, right? Mm-hmm. Is it Costa Rica, yeah, I believe so. She, which a, a pretty lady going on vacation by themselves, that's kind of you know, in yeah, a third world right. country, kind of asking for trouble a little bit. I know, I mean, it's 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 messed up. She got killed and all, but yeah, I mean, I would never want um like like my daughter to go travel by herself go in a group you know i guess it's safer whatever but she went by herself to celebrate her um birthday or something costa rica and she ended up it was some people at the resort conspired to to rape her and kill her and anyways the family um is going after airbnb they're doing a a lawsuit against airbnb airbnb of course saying hey we're just uh you know like you said the facilitator the money collector we didn't we didn't, um, you know, Set conspire to kill mm-hmm. or whatever the hell. We're not responsible, but yeah, it's a big, it's a big deal. They're suing Airbnb. I, I don't know how far they'll get with suing Airbnb. I mean, I don't mind them suing them. Hey, do you do? If you can get the paper <laughs> out of them, do it. Um, they need, they need. There's a lot they need to pay for, but I don't know how far they'll get. I'll, I'm gonna be watching it because I've been looking at that case a long time just to see what's going, what Airbnb is gonna do. Um, Airbnb already has some real bad PR, um, and there's a bunch of hosts out there that 
are 100% pro Airbnb. You know, the people with one listing and just love them and just think Airbnb does no wrong. Or the people have, that have, haven't done it enough to where the people that haven't done enough to where they're, they haven't had the bad side of Airbnb. So, I mean, you know, I think Airbnb is going to continue to screw hosts over until, you know, and they, they feel like they can because they know that they're getting in and they're creating their own listings now, which was smart, you know. Mm-hmm. But I've seen one lady complaining about it because they're building, Airbnb's building listings of where she is. So that's her competition now. So and <laughs> I don't know if Airbnb's going to rank you higher than their own listings, but I'll, right, I'll, right. <laughs> you know, but I, Let, let's segue here for a second. Okay. Because we talk about, we talk heavy Airbnb on this show. But we always talk we talk about side hustles too. Yeah. And Mahogany's got this really cool side hustle going on, or it might be her main hustle. You know, uh, what exactly? What are you doing now, Mahogany? Uh, fitness training, basically training people to get fit and make fitness a part of their lifestyle. Cool. Yeah. You're gonna be an Instagram star. Um, if people want to send me some endorsements, <laughs> sure. <laughs> you know. <laughs> That's could definitely close. you know model some gear so what that. made you want to do this um well i started my fitness journey two years ago and um it has pretty much changed my life um i'm able to get through full days without naps um we have a three-year-old i'm able to manage the household better mentally I feel more clear more collected um i feel like i actually have a life now and before i was just going through life so i just want to help others feel that way too that's cool and make some money too Hopefully. Oh, yeah, you got to, you know, you, you can't do it for the money, but if money comes out of it, that's good. Awesome. Now, have you tried to, like, um, advertise it to your guests at all kind of thing? You can, put, you know, do some workout sessions and stuff like that with guests coming through? or Not yet. Um, I'll probably focus more on that once we get our home gym put together. Um, we cleared out our gym, so we plan to buy gym equipment to put in there and pretty much offer those services and or you just have a gym in general so if guests want to come work out or if they want some help and some insight i mean even without the equipment i've been able to just inspire people who've come through just talking to them not really hey pay me but more like <laughs> here's some information you know letting them know about different things so that's been cool. cool i definitely share it with all the guests that come through they know by the time they leave oh yeah that girl she's fit she likes she loves the gym she loves health she loves fitness Sweet. Pretty much all of them can tell you that. Mahogany Fit is what it's called, right? Yes. F I T T. Yeah. Okay. Cool. F I T T. Mahogany Fit. Yeah. Look out. Go. Go check her out on the Instagram. I'm trying, I'm trying and to have stuff. you check me out. Are you trying to huh? be a client? Yeah. Oh yeah. I need. To, I need some exercise, big time. Want some, happy, <laughs> want some happiness in life? Huh? Happiness in life. <laughs> need some happiness? Yeah. Oh yeah. I could use some happiness. Well, big you. time. <laughs> I can go rant. I can rant over about it, but your life kind of just changes when you. When you get fit. When you become active, you know, you don't have yeah. to do the most. I'm not saying go run a whole marathon, but just let that blood flow in places it's supposed to flow to. Yeah, here's the, here's the thing. Um, I used to be really, really fit. And, and I mean, just a few years ago. But, you know, you get like, a, you, well, I got married, have, you know, kid, kiddo, kiddos. And um, started having to work a lot. It's just, yeah, I've been putting my health on the back burner. And it just happens. And I, need, I know I need to get back to it. And um, I guess balance is the is the hardest part, you know. Once you get like get everything going, I mean, y'all got. And it's not even about balance in a way, because there's no way you can always have everything equally. So we can't equally split time between your family and your job and your side hustle and your health. You can't. There's no way everything could be balanced. So we can't wait for that moment where everything's balanced. It's more like an orchestra. You know, we need a little bit of bass. We need a little bit of tempo. We need a little bit of this. Everything's going to be different, but everything needs to be given that attention for it to sound good, for it to go right. Yeah, I like that. I like that orchestra. Yeah, it's an orchestra. So don't wait for things to be perfect. Don't wait for things to be finally out of balance. It's not going to work like that. You're going to be waiting around and whatever you're trying to do in life, you're going to be waiting forever. Right. If you're waiting for the per- perfect moment or if you're waiting for opportunity, you got to create opportunity. And once you do it, you got to do it again. And then you got to do it again and then again. It's not like just do it a couple times. No, I'm good. No, you got to keep going. And you'll see the growth eventually. It might take a, a year. It might take two years. It might take three years. 
you're gonna find you're gonna eventually see the growth look at live let thrive you know all those times that you know y'all were coming out every night and now we have five casts now we have six. Oh my god this is going so slow this is going nowhere this is eight man i had a bad day i'm still right here this is day 10 and it's like you know you keep going now like you said you're at 75 and it's like whoa how do we get here and now you're seeing the fruits of your labor right, and right. so whatever is in life you got it you got to give it that mentality consistency is key that's inspiring. I'm going to go jog around the block real quick. I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, All right. Let's make you do it tomorrow, too. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, everybody, you know, everybody should should put their health at the forefront big time. Yourself I mean, goes first. You can't pour from an empty cup. I like that. You can't. That's true. And um, that's true. I'm going to do it. Yeah, you're going to make me a, a schedule later, right, for what yeah. I should do. <laughs> Come on. My wife goes to your gym. Well, She's going to start going, especially. I can't wait. And um, so bringing the baby and stuff like that. So, yeah, that'd be cool. And if I join that same gym, y'all are there on the weekends? Yes. That'd be cool. We could all, I could show Micah how to play some basketball. <laughs> be, hey, they're, they're reconstructing the gym right now. <laughs> they're what? Reconstructing the gym. Oh, yeah. oh, nice, nice, nice. Cool. That's awesome. Mahogany Fit, everybody. Look out for her on the yeah. Instagram. She'll be one of those stars. Check yes, me out, y'all. Yeah, so the Vegas shutdown helped you out, right? You was that we talked about that in the last episode, the Vegas shutdown. Yeah, the little shutdowns they had, and I I didn't jump ship. I just started taking more bookings because people were jumping ship. But uh, I think it's affecting like the residential house, you know. Um, the home shares are still going. So right, right. If the home shares are going, and the residentials are shutting down. It creates a new market. So yeah, man, it's uh Vegas is crazy. Vegas is real crazy. I um because of all the bands that are happening and stuff. I I recently, you know, like you said, I took my, I went into stealth mode a little bit. Took our picture off of the Airbnb. I, oh, yeah. that's a cool article that you brought up, and I and I read it, and you put it on the on our page about yeah. um how to rob an Airbnb. Oh yeah 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 man, that's, that's <laughs> man that was scary dude. But yeah, it, it's the truth. Like he he straight went in on how to. Airbnb's flaws, man, and the whole... And that's what I was telling people, man. Take your picture off of Airbnb and take your front of your house off of it. And that's, there's people... See, because there's people... There's people that still... They'll live the whole Airbnb experience thing. The whole people that say they work for Airbnb. I'm like, man, you work for your damn self. Uh, you know, <laughs> for real. Like, uh, but, you know, and those are the ones that you can easily spot and she and that whole, whole article that whole article was going in how you can easily spot those people the ones with their faces on it the ones with their names on it um you can easily go in there and you know what i mean just grip get all their information it's public information so yeah man it was crazy sweet yeah um so that um i was gonna i was gonna mention something and and we and we spoke about it a little bit in a few episodes ago yeah and uh, the um, what's I'm gonna call it about taking the pictures. The people that you can't see the pictures before they book, right? Yeah. People want to book your place. You can't see their um, profile picture unless mm -hmm. they want you to, or you said something like yeah. that, right? Yeah, that's true. But anyways, I, I heard our buddy, our buddy Jasper had an uh, interesting take on that. You know, mm -hmm. on his um, his podcast, um, Get Paid for Your Pad. Great mm -hmm. podcast, check it out. And um, so he was telling me that. That he thinks, I mean, he, he went, he, he covered both sides of it, you know, the discrimination side of, you know, they want to protect themselves just about discrimination or whatever. He made, he made an interesting point. He said, and he, he said something that what you kind of said before, you know, I, I don't want to end up staying at a racist house that don't want me there anyways, right? Mm -hmm. And so what he said that in, if Airbnb's goal is to, to bump like people uh, that are kind of racist or prejudiced off of their site, because they can no longer just rent to, let's say, white people, for example, or whatever. Mm -hmm. and, he, and he made it like this. He goes, let's say if there's 10 rentals. Yeah. Yeah. There's 10 choices to stay in this city this night, whatever. Um, oh, Airbnb did their new thing. And then now two or three or three of those guys are gone because they don't, oh, I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to, you know, I just want to rent mm -hmm. to one certain kind of people. So now there's only seven to choose from. And he goes, whereas, let's say the white people could have stayed at those white people's house, right? Yeah. And you still have seven choices for the minorities. Now, there it's both you know both groups or all, all the groups are trying to vie for those seven places. So in a way, it could backfire and actually hurt minorities that are trying to stay at spots. 
it just is an interesting take. It yeah. takes the it takes more how it would t end up taking more houses off the market for us to rent. Oh. Would it take the houses away that the prejudice houses away though? That's Wouldn't what he's it? that's what he's saying. Yeah. So I mean, I think an end. That's what you pretty much would want, right? Because I mean, most of the people who came out and said they didn't like it were the people who said like, "Hey, I look at their pictures and I kind of you know what I mean." I hear people saying that all the time. I see. I hear the number one thing I hear is the age thing. They say, "Hey, I look at their age," which he like one guy, like the guy who was in our meeting. He said, "If they're not twenty five, I don't rent to them." So I don't know. I mean, they, I think it, I don't know if it could hurt them. The, Lupita says hi. I don't think it could hurt the. Uh, <laughs> I don't think it could hurt them as much as it hurts the the hosts who don't want the everyone there like cause some people think me i don't care who i rent to as long as the as long as a uh, guy in the airbnb professional host group said if you can pay you can stay that's, <laughs> that's my motto right there <laughs> you can pay you can stay the only know? color you care about is green yeah for real you know? so, <laughs> but uh, it was it was just it was interesting you know and um yeah of course airbnb did it to to cover their asses right yeah. To get to stay away from discrimination lawsuits and stuff like that. Yeah. And, um, see, and that goes back. Can you really, what would I say? Can you sue Airbnb for discrimination? You could try. I think there are discrim there are discrimination suits against Airbnb right now. Oh, I hope they lose. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. That's what I'm just saying. No, 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 no. It's kind of hard to prove discrimination, though. Yeah, it really is. They, they put so many barriers. It's so hard to prove discrimination today. Well, especially off like, Let's, We're not gonna go let's say how anymore. your buddy did that social experiment when he tried to book a place Airbnb, and yeah. then his he said his white buddy went over there, boom, boom, yeah, boom, yeah, booked yeah. it. Like, I mean, that's pretty much proof right there, right? Yeah, but you have to record that and prove it. Yeah, like you would literally have to record that, prove it. You would need a confession, and, and you'd have to keep track of the host because I guarantee Air, Airbnb don't care about diving out no host. I guarantee you, Airbnb will dime out the host real quick. What do you mean? So, oh yeah, yeah. No, I, I feel like they'll be like, "Well, hey, the host said it. We don't have no control over that." Just like they're doing in down in Costa Rica, which they don't. But it'd be interesting to see. I don't know. Yeah, it'd be interesting. Y'all have a website, Sharebitrage, right? Sh the, oh, I'm sorry, Share <laughs> Sharebitrage. Well, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Share yeah. Yeah. and you got it as your um, as your symbol for your Airbnb page, right? You mm -hmm. don't have you don't have your picture. You have Share Mm-hmm. Under it, does it say sharebnb.com? Do you have it in the picture? No, you can't put that on Airbnb. On the picture, you can't? You can't put the website. No, you can't put the website. Oh, shoot. I got my website. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. On, on, your, on your Airbnb, on the photo? On the photo. It's a picture, uh, a logo I made. Oh, yeah, you can do that. That's you can put it on the logo. Smart idea, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, and so, um, so me, uh, I changed ours to SNL um, Family Rentals. Yeah. And so... On the website, I went to GoDaddy's and I bought SL Family Rentals, right? Because I didn't want to mess people up putting that and in there, whatever, the little plus sign or whatever. And so I just put SL Family Rentals. So I have the logo, and then right under it, it says SNL fam or SLFamilyRentals.com. So, I mean, right away, it, it shows people they can go straight to the yeah. to the website. Oh, that's a good idea. Was SL Rentals available? I didn't even check. I didn't even check. Um I don't know. I just came up with the name of SNL Family, okay. Family Rentals. I thought it was cool, but yeah. I should buy that one too then. Yeah, just long. <laughs> and then just redirect everyone from the other one. Yeah. But what GoDaddy does now, and, and, and you've opened up several sites, I'm sure, they have their own like web builder now. Back in the day, I don't remember them having that because I tried to start websites back in the day, and then you'd have to go to a third party to build your website, right? Yeah, that got built big with Wix. Wix. Yeah, so everybody started doing it. Everybody has website builders now. Okay. Well, they have their own too, and mm -hmm. they um, they let you use it for a month, for, which is genius. You know, it's yeah. a corporation; they, they know what they're doing, and they they let you use it for a month free. It was like nine ninety nine. So I said, like, oh, okay, I'll just use their their free one for a month to see if I like it. And so, and, and it's like as soon as you buy the name, you can build your website that same day. So I think that's pretty cool. And um, I I got it on there. I got a few pictures on there, but you know, I just started it. But it, I, they have where you can make it like a merch. You can get the merchant website. You can accept payments, and you can do all kinds of stuff like that. It's pretty neat. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> and so so you get a lot of traffic on your on your site from your from your Airbnb page. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we get like people hitting us up through that because it goes to our guest account. Yeah. 
And they book straight directly through you? I'll do sometimes. I'll take them directly. Yeah, especially okay. if it's like one of my timeshares. I'll take it directly. It's easier. Cut back on everybody's fees. <laughs> yeah. But you don't get the million dollar protection. I don't need it. <laughs> I don't need it. I don't think it exists. What's a good insurance to get then if you're going to go it on your own instead of go through Airbnb? Short term rental insurance through your homeowner's insurance. Oh, okay. Just yeah, call just them call and let them know. Them. Yeah, I don't know if I have progressive for okay. my homeowner's insurance. I don't know if everyone else has it. But yeah, you can call them like, like 40 extra dollars a month. It's not bad at all. Cool, cool. And yeah. with all these add ons, you think it's still worth it to do short term as opposed to long term? Yeah. <laughs> if, you're doubling, if you're doubling and tripling your rent, yeah, definitely. I think, I mean, I think it's here to stay. I mean, uh, I think you should have a few long term rentals, you know, collecting your money, you know, off that, off that side, you know. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. it depends on how hard you want to work and, you know. Yeah. You might have to do a couple extra steps, but you're going to have a couple extra bucks too. Or are you going to, you know, or you get this? Bucks. <laughs> a lot of extra <laughs> bucks, yeah. But I mean, yeah, I think short term rentals are here to stay. It's just you have to find a niche for it and find a market. I think that's really the biggest thing right now is finding a market that already has regulations in place. Because everyone who's talking about the shutdowns is really because they're going to markets that don't have regulations. Cool. It boomed. Cool. <laughs> they said it got big fast. Yeah. For real. But, what are the topics that you have? You had a buttload over here. Oh yeah, we're, that Canva thing was my main. One that was <laughs> really, uh, Recession uh, is coming. Denver can't enforce its Airbnb policies. Yeah, that was yeah that that came up. <laughs> I was talking to actually an old guest, um, James Carlson, and he was saying the same thing that I was saying about Arlington. I'm like, he said, look, Denver. What he was pretty much saying was Denver can't. They can't enforce the policies. The only way that you get, get caught is a neighbor telling on you, which I think that's what Arlington's going to do. So what well, the neighbors are going to tell at you, it seems to be North Arlington up in this area. So I feel like if the neighbor's telling you, that's the only way for you to get caught. Really? Yeah. We all know snitches get stitches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. But yeah, so I, I feel like a lot of places are like that. Arlington ain't. Do you do you save all of your guests' um, phone numbers and email addresses? Yeah, saved through my uh, PMS system. I have all of them. And do you um you ever thought of doing like like sending out emails to like past guests and stuff like that? Yeah, uh, it would be. Really we were just good. talking about an emailing list the other day. Send out specials and things like that to the guests. Even just yeah, like happy holidays good. from Share B and B. Mm-hmm. Just Keep remind them that you're still here. Top of mind, right? Yeah. Because yeah. like, it seems like everywhere you go, everything you purchase, every store or whatever, that's the thing. They want you to get on their on their list. I mean, every restaurant, they want to put you on, want you to, their app on your phone, right? And, sure. and that's genius. And that's genius. But you got to keep in touch with the customers. And, and you'll be scrolling. The people looking at their phones all day. And you'll be scrolling your email. And you're like, hmm, you know, I've been there in a while. Yeah, you think about it. Like, Maybe we should plan a vacation. Yeah. yeah. That's a, that's a really good email marketing tip right there. Um, for those that want to take get bookings outside of Airbnb, you know, not that our podcast isn't just meant for the Airbnb host. Because we got someone came up and was like, hey, that's against the rules. <laughs> Which, but we responded cordially. Well, Steve did. Um, <laughs> I said, thank you for being a fan. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, you can, uh, but yeah, like, for, but I, I've actually, um, the guy who owns, I think, a short-term rental university, he was actually talking about that for 2019. I don't know if he – I just saw the headline, but I didn't know what his views on why he became that way because he was really pro-Airbnb. But now he's like, hey, if you can, take your bookings off, off Airbnb if you can. So I don't know if something happened, which I'm going to go back on his channel and listen. But I think it's a few people have been getting like that, people that have been doing Airbnb a long time and saying, hey, I'm – Taking as many bookings as I can off their platform. Oh damn! Directly. Taking you mean taking the listings off? No, no, leaving the listing on there. Just taking bookings off, off, off of Airbnb. Kind of using well. just using Airbnb as a a, mid, a channel to direct it to themselves. Detour. Yeah, detour. <laughs> so I don't know, man. That's I don't know. A lot of people aren't the hosts. I find more a lot of more hosts aren't happy with airbnb but i think airbnb is going to continue to thrive because i think the hosts are split 
like the hosts are 50 50 on i don't like airbnb and the ones that do like airbnb you know and it's really dependent on what kind of host you have yeah yeah mm -hmm. so how has it been with y'all's jobs being able to do work at y'all's job still you're doing full-time both y'all mm -hmm. and do the business and re and raise a family and all that is it pretty tough i feel like the only time it gets tough is when you're like maybe having a crappy week and you're like halfway through the week and you realize you've been doing the same thing for the last five weeks or like 10 weeks or whatever you know basically the whole year we've been this has been our routine you know that 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 same routine so i feel like in those moments where you're overwhelmed it's like dang what more is there to life than this routine and i think sometimes you have those moments it's not anything that's constantly on your mind especially when you're we're really busy we're like always moving so when we have those moments of standstill we're like hold up we're doing the same thing over and over. So what we've found helpful is we put, we've been planning vacations. We have a couple of vacations and things coming up that's more exciting. So it's like we're working, but in like, we know in like five months we're going to be, you know, in the Bahamas. So it's like, you know, not so bad to like go through the routine. Even if it's like, hey, we know Friday we're going to Applebee's. We're going to enjoy some dinner and some drinks together mm -hmm. or, you know, as a family or whatever. So if you like make those little milestones, whatever it may be, hey, we're going to a concert in a couple of months. They keep those little excitements. It's not that bad to keep grinding until you don't have to grind that hard anymore. Right, right. Have a payoff for real. Break up the monotony, right? Yeah. yeah make it not real. seem so like repetitive and like, are we getting anywhere with this? <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? But um, well, they say you know suffer now and you reap the rewards later. But yeah, you still yeah, you can't just go 100 percent all the time. Mm -hmm. You gotta take your breaks. You gotta stop and smell the roses. Exactly. Or it's not even it's pointless. You might, you know, die die the next day and you didn't even get to enjoy it like that. For real. Like even this weekend was a huge load off. Just having a family in town, people friends, over, and then friends. party, our annual art artist bash is always a good yeah. time. Just to sit and laugh and enjoy the moment. Yeah. That's cool. Take time to smell the roses, right? Yeah. Definitely. But plan, and plan, you know, you gotta plan it out. I feel like the days we don't plan things is those is when we get those crappy days. Or when we don't communicate as well about as well as about what we have planned, it can go bad real quick to where it's like, okay, this is not working out. But if we're prepped, and that's when it gets like kind of tiring because you're so prepared, you just D -d 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 -d. this is what we do, and it's yeah. like you turn into robots. <sighs> yeah. What about you? I know you guys got a lot going on. Yeah, we got a lot going on. Like I said, wife and baby in Mexico until Sunday. In High Lupita. Yeah, they're saying, they're shouting out from Mexico. <laughs> Hola, saludos. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, so I've been um, trying to do things around the house. I had a lot of plans, but I have not done a lot of stuff. Because, <laughs> you know, Christmas hit, and I, oh, yeah. I got to do all that. I have a question. Christmas deal. You, you still have long-term rentals, right? I have the one, just the just one. one. And, then and the, you have one short-term. And right? one short-term, yeah. Which would you say is easier? Of course, the long term's easier. Yeah, long it term's is? easier. I don't have to do nothing, you know, until they leave. I mean, they've been there two years, so they don't haven't they haven't told me they want to leave anytime soon. So, I know I probably have some <laughs> have some work to do when they when they bounce. Mm -hmm. But until that day, it's been it's been pretty good. It's been pretty good. Well, why I, is it why is it why is it easier? And that's that's a good question. It's it's um well cuz I just collect the money. It's the it's a uh, rocking chair money or or a uh, mailbox money. It used to be mailbox money. Now it goes straight to your bank account. <laughs> Thanks to our our buddy James Fan out there for that that tip. How much time would you say you spend on your long term just a week? Give it a week. Just from Monday through no, Sunday through Saturday. How much time do you spend on your long term rental and how much time do you Zero. spend on your short term rental? zero long long term zero yeah i might send a text and say hey you know rent's due tomorrow don't forget and that's it short term <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's a lot I, I don't i don't i mean okay well we organize the cleanings lupita does the cleanings and thank god you know because um i hate cleaning <laughs> and she um but as far as like dealing with guests coming through dealing with tinkering with the pricing I mean, I'm making a website for it now. I mean, yeah, I put, I put a lot of thought and effort and like, you know, a little anxiety if it ain't gonna, it ain't booked up next month. And I guess a lot, I spend a lot of thought and then, you know, it's, it's a lot more, um, uh, time consuming. Yeah. I and guess I, we probably, no, no. and I've thought of that. Yeah. I mean, is it worth it for the time that we're putting into it? We might make a couple hundred more bucks or 500 more bucks, whatever a month 
but as but as as far as the work we have to put into it and the stress and the anxiety we go out of town we got to find a cleaner then hopefully they do it right and all this stuff it's just a lot more that goes into it yeah and i guess coming from being a long-term uh, landlord for so long to switch to short term we jumped right into short term you know versus kind of having that lax mindset and then now you're so hands-on i can see how it can be like whoa this is overwhelming is this worth it because um but yeah because i was thinking like would you ever consider taking your hands off Letting someone else manage the yeah, like take your hands off. I, I I've thought of that, but now with the with the band coming to to Hearst, I, I I mean I wouldn't I wouldn't do that. What do you mean? I wouldn't try to let someone else manage it, especially if no, it's... no, not manage it. Just automate everything, cleanings, all that. Let it just be automated. Responses. Yeah, but is it? Would it totally be automated? Is it possible? I mean, you still got to follow up on cleaners and stuff like that, right? You don't have to follow up on anything if it's on turnover B&B. Well, if they do a crappy job. It'll be in the cleaning. Just leave them a better view, get a new cleaner. See, that's 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 a task, though. I mean, you got to stay on top of it. <laughs> no. no, it's not really. Like, we, like really, I, I haven't been to any of my long, short terms for a long time. I mean, if it's a bad cleaning, you just give her a bad review on cleaning and if she continues to do the bad job, get a new cleaner. It's all right there for you. It's almost necessary once you start getting multiple units, especially yeah. if it's not a home share. It becomes quite difficult to manage many on your own without, you know, that, that hands off. And not meaning, you know, you have like me and Micah, we're the ones running around going over cleaning. It's not like that. It's more like the different um, platforms they have available to kind of outsource the work for you that you could still kind of, you still, of course, you have to peep on there every once in a while, see what's going on. Every once in a while, you might get a bad cleaning. But, you know, as we know, Airbnb guests are usually pretty clean. They're not, like, trash in the place. And But unless your cleaner's just crappy, which you'll find out quickly. Yeah. Right, right. Um, the automatic key, you guys have that. Do you guys have a sledge locker or you guys have the... A sledge, yeah. Okay. We got that. And I guess if I was going to go full automatic, I'd have to get, I'd have to upgrade to a lock where I could change it with my phone instead of, because the Don't cleaner. Don't change ain't... it at all. Let it be sent to him. Oh, that's what I'm saying. Like, I th from the sledge? Yeah. No, not from the sledge, from the remote lock, remote lock 5i. Yeah. So, so like, you, you could, yeah, like you could just have an app connected to your Airbnb account. And Airbnb sets up the code, shoots it to the lock. The lock gets sent straight to them. So like if someone instant booked my place right now, they would have the code. It's going to be emailed to them. Mm -hmm. So I, that's why I was wondering, like, and this is for long-term people, too, that do this. Have you taken your long-term strategy of it being passive and implemented it into your short-term strategy and made that passive? Not not totally successfully, no, because, I mean, yeah, I mean, we still, we're still hands-on on it pretty good. Uh, and, I, yeah, I'd love to go 100% passive on it. Is this your first year? Are you guys, you guys, have you surpassed your we first year? We passed a year, yeah. October, we passed a year. Doing okay, it. so now it's a good time to probably start finding out those different strategies because we did do our first year on our yeah. own. That's because you got to know what's going on. You got to yeah. know how it operates. Don't right. just, I mean, I guess you could just jump in and automate everything, but. And you know what? I, that's like the number one question people ask me. Like, hey, should I, matter of fact, a guy asked me this last week. He said, should I buy an Airbnb business that's already running? I said, you could do that. You can make money doing it, but the only thing is you aren't going to really know the systems behind it. You know what I mean? I don't think you're going to know like how it works rather than if you just started off like from us, we all started doing it ourselves, picked up. Now we know the system and we can create systems to automate it. And that's, that's the, um, that's, that's how you become a successful business owner, right? By, yeah. by setting up your systems. And it's one thing I heard on, like, we, we listen to Bigger Pockets a lot, you know, the real estate um, podcast. And they, a lot of people say, oh, you know, I, I outsource everything. I don't, I don't swing a hammer. I'm worried about the big numbers, whatever. But then a lot of people say, I wanted to learn everything about a house first. So we did our mm -hmm. first reno, us, you know, learning yeah. how to do the plumbing, learning how to do the drywall, learning how to, because I wanted to know if, when I do start hiring out, I don't get ripped off. Yeah. And that's, that's a smart thing, too. Mm-hmm. So um, there's, I mean, yeah, I mean, getting your hands dirty is, is valuable, especially at first. But then after that, like, yeah, try to automate it as much as you can. And um, 
Because I was at a meetup with my boy. My shout out because my boy Norman just came here. I was actually at a meetup with my boy Josh. And we were talking to this lady. And she's like, I'll never ever let somebody clean my Airbnb. That's not me. And I'm like, why not? She was like, I just don't trust them. I'm like, it's almost like, and then I talked to this other guy. And he was in there. He was like, some people don't know the true value of time. He goes, if you spend that time cleaning that Airbnb, why don't you go spend that time, outsource it, spend that time to go get another one? I was like, man, that's true. Like, he goes, there's so much value in time. But, and that's what, like, I, I started to notice it now a little bit on my corporate job. Like, dang, it's, it's really, time's really valuable. You have to learn how to use it. And I read this article today. This dude was 41 years old and retired. And he had all this time now. But he's like, I don't know what to do with it. You know, you have to, he goes, like, he, he actually was a FI fire person, financial independence, retire early. He was, when I, he goes, what they didn't tell me was, you can't just retire your job. You have to retire into something, like something you love doing or something like that. And that's why I was like, man, that's so true. Because off the off seven months, I had to learn how to budget my time. You know what I mean? It's so much time. You, you really, that's a strong thing. I'm happy I read that article because the next time I take off, man, I'm going to be, keep that in my mind at all times. Because, yeah, automation, that's, like, the number... That's if you're trying to grow. If you're yeah, because a lot right. of people, they don't see it as a business. Some people see it as a fad or, oh, you know, I'm house hacking. Or, oh, yeah, I have a property over there yeah. that I manage. And so they're like, yeah, I'm cleaning it. I'm the one doing it. And it's like, why well, be proud of one thing if you could be proud of many? But some people don't. They're not into that. They're just doing it. Maybe, like you said, maybe that yeah. is what they do with their time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, I was just thinking that. Cause I was that was one thing to kick. Cause I, I just got hopped back on the bigger pockets forums and a bunch of people. That's the first thing they say. It's just so much time with short term rentals. I'm like, I don't. I think the time's the same if you know what you're doing, you know. And I noticed a, a huge difference in just doing the podcast with you from the very beginning when we first started. I mean, it was like ding, ding, ding. Every five seconds, you'd like be yeah. stopping and hitting and hitting, you know, yeah. and dealing with the customers. Oh, I got another booking, booking, you know. And yeah. that's how I learned how to be such a great podcaster because I'd have to carry the shows. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, but and now you don't even you ain't even looking at your phone. I mean, it's just yeah. like it's all it's running by itself. Mm -hmm. It's smooth. Yeah, you got to pay someone to help, but that's yeah. that's part of it, right? Yeah, and that's a lot of thing of when you start getting money, you have to start helping people. A lot of people don't realize if I create a job for somebody, I help someone. Like when Mahogany's uh, friend, shout out to Chelsea, hey, she was Chelsea. like, um, she like she came on board and helped us. Like she texts us all the time, like, yo, that really helps me that I'm able to work for you guys. You know, and that's what a lot of people don't realize. You can create a business and uh, and help other people around you, and that's that's what I look at it too. You know, I'd rather have I want my time. You know, and I can focus on other things. And that's what the share economy is about, really. Yeah. You know making jobs for others helping others and just sharing everything you know right it's like right. a circle of life yeah because right now my, my time's about to go towards starting a cleaning company <laughs> nice. yeah yeah while well, mahogany's getting their fitness on get a cleaning company learn that automate that too Heck yeah nice it's, it's like um you ever watch that uh, gordon ramsay that chef gordon ramsay guy he goes in mm -hmm. and, and he has some show like kitchen nightmares or whatever he goes in and fixes up help people that have their own restaurants the mom and pop joints that are they're running them you know real shittily <laughs> that's a word <laughs> and uh, he goes in there and you know of course he, he's all angry and he but you know starts ordering people around this is how you got to do it but the main thing that happens the people that have those restaurants that they, they um you know their owner operator and then they're the cook too and they want to do everything they're there every single day and they're they won't let the head chef be the head chef they won't let the second in command do his thing they won't because yeah. they're trying to no no you're doing they're micromanaging everything and it's just i mean and they're running it into the ground they're not letting people around them, you know, shine and do their right. thing, you know. Yeah. And so that's this is the main thing is trying to get them. You're the owner. You need to be hands off and let it run itself, you know. And some people can't let go of that power. Exactly. It, it creates a bottleneck, right? Everything has to go through them for it to for it to work. You got to pull yourself back and let and, and let it run itself. Yeah, of. you need a trustworthy team. For yeah. real. You think Bill Gates out here slanging Windows 10 boxes? <laughs> <laughs> Norman Negative. said Norman Hamilton chimed in he said don't buy an Airbnb business unless you know the business yeah it's good advice Norman yeah mm -hmm. that's true
and that's and that's the main reason you know i i mean because remember when i was gonna we were gonna we got this this house and we were gonna move out and and i was questioning i don't know man i should just do long term like my first one it's easier and and yep. y'all were saying, oh, this would be a good Airbnb. You got to do this, this, and this. I, like, I don't know. I was so freaking nervous. But I was like, you know what? For the good of the show, because we do, we did, we were already doing an Airbnb podcast. Yeah. And um, I had to, I didn't run an Airbnb. And so for the good for the show, I was like, you know, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and try it. I'm going to try to learn it so I can have something to talk about on the show. That's why I started. <laughs> right. Yeah. And so, um, and it's been successful, you know, for the most part. And it's making us some pretty good money. And so I'm glad I did it, if not just for the knowledge. And um, and you don't know you're gonna like something until you try it, right? So. Definitely, you don't know until you try it. And so yeah, so jump jump in there, jump out there, get your hands dirty, and start Airbnb, and y'all. Don't be scared. <laughs> or start 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 whatever it is. I mean, yeah, whatever just, it is. And and I see and 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 I wanted to talk to you, Micah, about like I don't know, uh, totally transitioning the show or make it you know more fifty percent um, short term rental, fifty percent like just innovation or entrepreneurialism stuff like that. Because I mean, what if they what if this whole STR you know starts to starts to get banned everywhere? I mean, what are we gonna talk about? <laughs> what are we gonna talk about? The fact that they banned. <laughs> How to stay surviving in the short term short term rental economy? And I'm and I'm cool with that too. And I'm I cool think with it's that gonna too. I think it's gonna be here. I think it's just about creating business models that are gonna that are gonna survive. Um, like I said, corporate arbitrages and home shares ain't going nowhere. Um, even the timeshare thing I do, it ain't going nowhere. You know, I can I, when Vegas got shut down. My timeshares just start take boom boom start taking a hit. You just have to have you just have to have create different business models. A lot of people, and that's what I'm saying. Like, matter of fact, Can told me this. He goes, the reason why you're so successful in Airbnb is because you take different ideas behind you, corporate rentals, uh, timeshares, everything. And that's how I tell people use different models of Airbnb. You know what I mean? If you're just doing residential neighborhoods, yeah, you can get shut down. You know what I mean? So, you know. It is what it is. Well, cool. That's a good. That's a good stopping point. I think we've been at it for over an hour and twelve minutes. <laughs> yeah. But it was it was great having Mahogany back yeah, on the thanks show. Yeah, for having me, y'all. Yeah. It's good seeing everyone pop yeah. in and you know get a little five cents. That was five nice. Five cents. Three was it? I don't know. I never know. Ten I always cents. Get the <laughs> Is it my ten cents or five cents? That was my five. My two cents. Oh, it's two. Oh. <laughs> but inflation, it's about five or ten. Now, right? <laughs> and so, uh, hopefully, we can do a show soon with both of the wives on. That'd be yeah. cool. Oh, and yeah. and then um, my wife's doing her business thing, you know, getting her hustle on. Yes. What's up, Lupita? Miss you, love you. And um, and so, yeah, this is a great show. I'm glad. Yeah. I'm glad so hit me at Mahogany Fit. And hit me up on uh, Facebook if you're looking for any tips or. Or a trainer or anything like that. We'll have her link on the show notes, Mahogany Fit. And um, we'll have, yeah, you can read where can they find us, Micah? Live Let Thrive. Uh, LiveLetThrive.com. Of course, you can find us at Live Let Thrive on Facebook, uh, YouTube. Um, yeah, you can email us, Live Let Thrive at gmail.com. And follow us on Instagram, Live Let Thrive. I'm always posting stuff on there. My bad for the Instagrammers. <laughs> we were late on getting started, but we got it though. Yes. So All right. Nice. Well, take care, y'all. Peace out. Keep thriving. Later. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Live, Let, Thrive. Be sure to tune in next week for all the latest in the world of Airbnb and all that entails. Bye-bye.